Ranching, an incredibly important industry in Texas that has majorly affected the history of the state. It started developing in Texas during the early 1800s and became one of the main reasons for growth in the state. Even though it's not in the place it was 100 years ago, ranching still plays a massive role in the state and how cities are built. Ranches can stop cities from growing and halt growth in entire regions of the state if they're big enough. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, King Ranch. Located between Corpus Christi and the Rio Grande Valley, the ranch has played a role in keeping a lot of the southern part of Texas very rural, just by existing. So today I wanted to talk about how this happened and what the future holds for this region of the state. Before that though, I want to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make videos like this every week, exploring interesting geography related content. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, I highly suggest you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. So what is the King Ranch and why is it so important? Well, here it is, located in an extremely expansive area in between Corpus Christi and the McAllen-Edinburgh metropolitan area of the Rio Grande Valley. King Ranch is the biggest ranch in the U.S. at an absurd 825,000 acres. I think when a lot of people look at this map of the ranch, they don't realize just how big Texas is. So I kind of have to put it into perspective here. King Ranch is bigger than the state of Rhode Island, as well as the country of Luxembourg. This is absolutely massive and takes up a really sizable portion of the region. The ranch consists of four large disconnected sections called divisions. The Laurelis Division is located in the northeast corner near Corpus Christi. The Santa Gertrudis Division slightly borders the Laurelis Division, but is mostly located to the west of Kingsville. In the south central, we find the Encino Division, the smallest of the four. And finally, in the southeast, we see the Norius Division, which takes up the southern third of Kennedy County. Don't actually ask me how to pronounce those words, I don't know. Now getting into the history of King Ranch, Richard King, the ranch's eventual founder, was a river pilot born in New York City. He was a very influential individual in the mid-1800s, known for hauling merchandise on the Rio Grande, where he made a very good living. He met his business partner, Mifflin Kennedy, in 1943, who helped him with his boat transportation business. King found the land that would later become his ranch in 1852 while traveling from Brownsville to Corpus Christi by horseback. He was impressed by the area and decided then and there to turn this land into a ranch. So him and a new partner, Gideon Lewis, established a cow camp on the Santa Gertrudis Creek, where he purchased 15,500 acres of land that encompassed present-day Kingsville, Texas. Over the next few years, King continued to purchase large swaths of land. It got to 53,000 acres in 1854, and as the years passed, the ranch grew to as large as 1.2 million acres, or 1,875 square miles. Now fast forwarding, the ranch obviously could not stay this large. Richard King lived a full and influential life, but died and had this land distributed to his family. The official King Ranch shrunk by a few hundred thousand acres, which wasn't all that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Something that was a big deal, though, is oil. In 1933, exploration and drilling rights on the ranch were leased to Humble Oil of Houston for $127,000 in exchange for one-eighth revenue on every barrel of oil pumped. This was massive for the ranch because in 1939, Humble struck oil and gas. This became a very important part of the ranch and still is because this is a major area for oil in the country. Now, this may not fully show why King Ranch is so important now. And part of that is because of cattle, which isn't necessarily a crazy interesting video topic. The ranch has played a major role in breeding cattle and domesticating longhorns. The Santa Gertrudis breed has had major national and global presence, and the ranch has even produced winning racehorses. The ranch is now home to over 35,000 cattle and over 200 quarter horses, which I'm pretty sure adds up to 50 horses, but I really can tell you. The King Ranch has become a global company, making acquisitions in Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, Western Texas, and most majorly Florida. They've even expanded overseas, making land purchases in Argentina, Cuba, Brazil, Australia, Venezuela, Spain, and Morocco. There's a lot going on, and this is more than just a large ranch in Southern Texas. But that doesn't answer the topic of this video. How does the King Ranch affect Southern Texas? Because it's in a very major way. Let's start by looking at a map of this Corpus Christi Rio Grande region without the ranch borders. You can see the emptiness of that stretch of land in between the two populated areas. There are large swaths of land where you don't see any small towns. It's completely rural. That's the King Ranch. 
Now, Texas as a state has exploded in population over the last century. Every major city has seen absurd growth, and especially major suburbanization. Specifically in the Texas Triangle, every city has changed significantly and exploded onto the scene. We haven't seen this type of growth in the southern Texas region at all. Sure, these cities have gotten way bigger, but it's just not at the same rate we see farther to the north and east. We see three major metros in the south here, Laredo, Corpus Christi, and the Rio Grande Valley, with Edinburgh, McAllen, and Brownsville. Why wouldn't these cities explode in population and create their own Texas Triangle? Well, the King Ranch is right in the middle. There's also a lot of other ranching in the region outside of King Ranch that limits growth. This means the more rural areas in between the two metros have not been able to develop and suburbanize to turn the whole region into a more populated, important area. King Ranch also takes up a very important stretch of coastline. Now, the Gulf Coast has never been incredibly populated, so I'm not claiming that this has changed everything. But there would be developments along the coast if it weren't for the ranch, that has existed since the mid-1800s, well before any cities started to explode onto the scene in Texas. These small towns in the Southern Triangle would absolutely have grown more majorly. There would be a decently sized city in between Corpus Christi and the Rio Grande Valley. But instead, there's this massive ranch that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. You can see exactly where the southern border of the ranch is, because there's an immediate change. More roads, more population, and we see the city of Raymondville with a population of 10.5 thousand. I'm not saying the rural areas in between these cities would turn into some megalopolis, but the ranch has completely taken away any chance for that to happen. There would be more going on here if there could be. We've seen the crazy growth in Texas, and I think this is a major region why it hasn't been as major in the south. Finally, if we move up to Corpus Christi, this is the only place where the ranch directly borders a major city. You can see exactly where the border is, and this is in the southern part of Corpus Christi that has developed much better than the north. King Ranch takes the option of coastal development away from the city, and I guarantee this has stunted growth in the area, because they couldn't build there even if they wanted to. Corpus Christi is a city built with the coast in mind, and there's a lot of development where there can be. If all that land was free to develop, I guarantee at least this area would be somewhat populated. But that choice has been completely taken away by the ranch. So that's my thoughts on this incredibly large and important ranch. There's no denying its effect on the region. And there's so much going on that makes it important to the country. From clothing lines to car models, the King Ranch has made its mark on the world. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Kazen, Zylo, Boss King Inc., Uncouver, Pole Pots Piehole, Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Dark Bird, Obigrad, Elijah Path, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Somnom Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Jake Holloway, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. I appreciate you all so much. There are a lot of members now, and I really appreciate all of you. It genuinely, like, helps me out every single month. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It's just an extra way to help out the channel if you appreciate the content and you want to help me out in the future. All of this money just goes into my savings for a car, for college, and it's just an extra thing if you want to help out. Thank you so much.